Hello, welcome to Ham Radio Basics. Whether you've had your license for a while and just hadn't really gotten on the air, or you're new to Ham Radio and ready to make that first contact, this is the series for you. So let's see what we've got going with K5ATA Ham Radio. Okay, so here we have an assortment of some of the basic tools for soldering. Okay, kind of step through them really quickly. This is soldering flux. What this does is this actually helps, kind of helps the flow of solder. It's actually like little bits of solder metal melt or embedded, I guess, inside of a paste. Obviously, you're going to need some solder. This is, <laughs> that tells you how long I've had this, this roll of it. It's from Radio Shack. So... It's a 64 rosin core solder. This is a soldering gun. Okay, now this dude right here, I forget the wattage. It's a 150 or a 230 watt soldering gun. With this guy right here, um, I use it for bigger jobs. Like <clears throat> maybe if I'm melting or uh, soldering the braid on coax or something like that, it'll heat it up much more quickly. Okay, this is just a cheap old soldering iron. This is not the cheapest of the cheap. I mean, it's it's a decent enough iron. It's not not great. It's not horrible. Um, it's a Weller. It's been around for a little. I've had this one for a little while. This one's got little work lights on it that light up that don't really do a whole lot. Um, but I think this guy was probably I don't know, ten bucks, fifteen bucks, something like that, and. This right here is a soldering station. Um, it's got a temperature control. You can see it's climbing back up. I let it go to sleep. It has a 10 minute sleep. This is one I picked up for, oh, I don't remember what I paid. It wasn't much on Amazon, maybe 40 bucks or something like that. Um, it's the Xtronic Model 3020. Um, you can adjust the temperature in Celsius or Fahrenheit. I like this one because I can adjust the temperature based on my needs when I'm doing so I can turn this down and it'll it'll adjust for me. It's got the holder for it. Um, it's got the sponge which I have not wet yet. You know, you'll, I'll show you how to use that in a minute. And it's got the tip cleaner over there. And then one thing that a lot of times people overlook when they're getting started, get you a cheap little pair of helping hands or two. They make this variety and I have another variety at at the shop that has a little magnifying glass on it these guys are only a few bucks and like maybe five tops and what this is is you can put your wires in a little alligator clip that you're going to solder you can use it to hold stuff because i don't know about you but i only have two hands and sometimes you need more and that's why that's called helping hands so now that we've seen the basics of you know what tools you might need to get soldering Let's go ahead and show you how to solder. Now for the purpose of today, I'm gonna to go ahead and use the soldering station just because the iron heats, heats up much more quickly and I'm comfortable with this one. Um, there are definitely more expensive options out there, but this one has served my needs fairly well for, I guess I've had this one for about six months or something like that, and it seems to work well. So let's get started. Okay, so for today's video, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to use this kit to kind of show you the basics of how to get started. This is actually a kit that I have some students at school that are um, putting this together. And so I bought one for myself just to kind of have it. It's a cool little kit. Um, a lot of times a beginner ham, they, they want to start, you know, maybe they think about getting a, a kit and putting it together, but it's a little overwhelming, a little daunting at, at first. Um, and this isn't a bad kit. I think I paid, if you already have a soldering iron, I think they're like 15 bucks or something like that. And for $15, basically at the end of it, assuming it goes well, you have a working FM radio, um, receiver, I should say. You have a working FM receiver. So let's break into this. I'll go ahead and show you kind of the basic of what's in this kit but more importantly I'm going to show you how to solder onto a PCB board. 
Okay, so here is the PCB board, and this is the front that's got the layout for where the pieces go. And the back, and on the back, I zoomed it in so you can see. Okay, on the back, you have these little metal soldering pads. Okay, and that's how you're going to solder components onto a PCB board. Now, something to pay attention to, these lines on the board are traces. Okay, this is what is connecting this pad to this pad, etc. So when you're soldering, you need to be careful not to break or melt anything in these traces because, well, it won't work anymore. So let's take a look here. Um, you'll notice over here, my sponge is, is dry. This is going to be a mess. Typically, whatever soldering iron you get, you're going to want something where you can wet your tip of your soldering iron because that's going to clean it. All right. All right, so that's off. Clean your tip off. And then you're actually going to get a little bit of solder on it. You can see that's good and hot. And what you want to do is you just want to hold it so that it's on one side. And you're going to touch the solder to the, try not to touch it to the actual iron itself. You're going to touch it to the other side of the wire there. Or post, I guess that is. And do the same thing here. And you can see I've got two soldered legs there. Now, something else to pay attention to, you want to make sure that they are not touching each other. And I look like I'm good there. Um, and also make sure they're not touching any of the other pads there. So it takes just enough solder to to get it, you know, soldered on there. But be careful how much you put on. At the end of it, it should look kind of like a little mountain peak or something sticking up. So um, after that, you can cut those off or whatever, but that's related to the kit. A um, couple things I want to go ahead and point out. If your iron's not hot enough, um, it's not going to heat the component here. And the key to a good soldering joint is you want the metal that it's actually soldering to to be hot enough that it melts the solder. So that way the solder is going to adhere to it. Otherwise you end up with what's called a cold solder joint, which the solder will melt around it, but won't really adhere to the actual pad and the post. And so it tends to break off easily or not make good connection. And that's how come sometimes you have something soldered up. Maybe it looks nice and pretty. And at the end of it, something's not working right. So take your time. Um, you know, you saw that only took a few seconds to get that solder in there and get it hot enough and I was just touching the post here um, also it's part of you know whatever iron you get this iron gets nice and hot and it's temperature controlled if you have one of those um, cheaper and expensive ones they'll still work um, it's just you kind of have to be a little more patient they don't get as hot sometimes and they definitely take longer to heat up a lot of times okay so that's that for soldering any questions or comments comment below um, hit like, hit subscribe, we do appreciate it. And up next is going to be how to solder and join two wires together. Y'all take care, and we'll see you on the air.